everybody, what's up? Welcome to Blue Screen. My name is Jared, and if you're like me, you use your GH5 in a very specific way. That means it needs to be the most versatile camera in your arsenal. You need to be able to take it in and out of its rig really fast. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna walk you guys through how I built my specific rig because I feel like it's a little bit different than a lot of the other rigs you see out there. And I'm gonna explain to you why I did the things that I did and walk you guys through the steps of how to put this thing together. So this is the rig right here. The first thing we gotta do is take it apart. Boom, okay, now we have the camera right here, disassembled, ready to go. And before we get into building this thing, I think it's important to explain a little bit of how I use this camera, because that's going to inform a lot of the way that I built this rig. So this camera I bought probably two years ago, and I kind of wanted it to be an all-arounder, run and gun kind of camera. And what that meant was I wanted to be able to handhold it. That was a super important thing. The other cameras I use are two Ursas, and a Blackmagic Pocket 4K, all rigged up. Those cameras are significantly heavier, much harder to carry around and use just on the go. So I wanted something that's gonna be a lot lighter than that for kind of run and gun style shooting, quick shooting. I wanted something that's gonna be really versatile, something that I could use in a lot of different situations and not have to worry about it. And so there's a lot of things that went into that decision, uh, things like getting in-body image stabilization, getting things like video autofocus, were super important. Being able to do slow-mo in camera, super important. And so all of that went into informing why I chose this camera, the GH5 specifically. The price was fantastic for what it can do, and it still is really fantastic. You can get these things for under a thousand bucks. I mean, you can do basically anything on them. It's pretty impressive. So this is the GH5 right now. Only thing I have on it is the Lumix 12 to 35 lens. So I use this lens uh, because going back to how I'm using this camera, I wanted something that's gonna be run and gun that can kind of do everything uh, decently well. And this is kind of a decently all arounder type of lens. The 12 to 35, uh, that makes it a 24 to 70 in a full frame equivalent, which basically makes this a perfect lens to do most stuff. So I keep this lens on here 95% of the time. I rarely change this lens off of the camera. I love it because it's really small, especially in comparison to a 24 to 70 on like a full frame equivalent. The lens is tiny, which means that I can put this guy on a gimbal. And like I said, I needed this camera to be versatile because I put this camera on a gimbal a lot. And when it's all rigged up, I can't put it on my gimbal. I need to be able to take it out of the rig really fast and get it onto the gimbal because I use that a lot. I take this thing on and off the rig all the time. So with that said, let's get into building this guy. So the first thing we're gonna need is this guy. This is a battery grip. Now we need some kind of power solution for this camera, right? Because we can't just run off of the single battery that's inside of the body. Now what I said before, a lot of people when they're building rigs is they're probably gonna use an external battery. They're gonna use something like a DC or a dummy battery or power off of the USB port. I didn't wanna do that. The reason why I didn't wanna do that is because if I wanna take this off of the rig, that's one more thing that I have to unplug. So by using the battery grip, it gives me a battery that is inside of the camera as well as the battery that's inside of the battery grip. Super useful to do it that route. Now we are gonna have some more normal accessories. Uh, the next thing we're gonna put on is this small rig base plate. So the small rig base plate right here, you guys have probably seen this in all kinds of rig builds, very, very popular. Uh, base plate because it's cheap and it's super functional and so that's what we're gonna be using here today all right now with our base plate on we're good to go there that's gonna allow us to attach rails because that's gonna be come important soon the next thing we need to do is attach a quick release plate now I use Manfrotto quick release plates you may not use Manfrotto quick release you may use something like an Arca Swiss that is fine uh, just all my tripods are Manfrotto uh, plate styles, and so this is the kind of plates that I use. I could bother changing them out, but who, who cares that much? They're just quick release plates, so. Great, now with that part done, the next step is we need to go ahead and get a rail attached to this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and take this rail. This is like a six inch rail. Uh, I think this one was from Film City. You can get them from Small Rig. Uh, you can get them from all kinds of different places. And we're gonna slide it into this side that is closer to the GH5 body. 
I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that guy down. So this is what we got so far. Now we get into doing some of the more uh, interesting stuff. That's the basics. So we're gonna take this guy. This guy is a battery cheese plate. So we're gonna use this to mount the battery onto the back of the camera. Uh, essentially this takes the 15 millimeter rod and turns it at a right angle so that we can mount this on the back of the camera here. And that will allow us to put the battery plate on here. So I mentioned uh, putting a battery back here. The interesting thing, thing that you might be thinking is, Jared, you already are using a battery in the battery grip and a battery in the camera. What are you gonna use a battery back here for? Now, here's where things get fun because we're gonna be putting a monitor on this camera. We're gonna be using this for the monitor. So let's go ahead and get this battery plate on here. This is the one that I'm using. I honestly don't remember where I got it. A lot of companies sell these, small rig sells one. The only thing you wanna pay attention to is you wanna make sure it has a 7.4 volt out port on it. This one has one right here. And you wanna make sure that you have that and that it's facing down or in a direction that's not gonna get in the way for whatever device you have. So I wanna face mine this way. I'm gonna screw it in there just like that. All right, now we've got a battery plate on there. That's on there nice and secure. The next thing we need to attach is this cheese bar. Now, my cheese bar has this little cable thing from Small Rig. Uh, you don't have to have that. That's totally optional. It's just for cable management. Um, but I'm just gonna put this up here on the top. All right, now the reason that we put this cheese bar on here is because this cheese bar allows us to basically turn the holes on this cheese plate 90 degrees so that we can mount stuff facing upwards. And the thing that we're gonna mount facing upwards is this guy. This is a monitor mount. So this one's from Small Rig. Uh, you can, again, get these from all kinds of different companies. Uh, but I prefer this one because it has two screw holes that are quarter 20 thread. That way I can screw this in nice and secure and it's not gonna come loose. Sometimes if you got the ones that only have one screw hole, uh, those can kind of spin loose a little bit and, and get in your way. Now, if you have like an RE locating pin, that might work well. But I found that this works really well for me. And so that's why I use these. Now you might be wondering, Jared, why are you not attaching your monitor to the camera itself? Or why are you not putting it in a cage or something? And again, I come back to, I put this thing in and out of a rig a lot. And so the more things that I don't have to plug and unplug or take on and off of the camera itself, the faster I can get this thing on and off of the rig. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I put the monitor on here. This is the Atomos Ninja 5. This guy is how you really maximize what you're able to get out of this camera. I mean, it's incredible the quality that you can get out of this camera with this little thing. Uh, so I highly recommend getting one of these. If you have a GH5, it's really how you just get the most out of the camera. And we're gonna go ahead and use the MPF plate adapter. Now you can just use MPF batteries right on the back of camera if you wanna do that. Uh, I have opted to not do that because the larger batteries can get in the way of me actually using the buttons, which is why I moved it to the back using the battery plate. So this allows us to attach a nice chunky battery to this monitor because the Atomos Ninja 5 does eat batteries. So we're gonna go ahead and attach that battery on there just like that. And you can see this rig really starting to take shape. I mean, really can see how this guy is gonna look when it's all put together and we are only missing one piece and that is our HDMI cable. Now this guy is a particular one. It's two right angles that are both facing the opposite direction. So a left and right, right angle HDMI cable. This allows us to essentially go in all different kinds of orientations. They're super useful and I highly recommend them. This is like a one footer and they're kind of hard to find but they're super good when you do find them. So I do highly recommend these guys. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide that right into our HDMI port. Boom. And with that, our rig is good to go. This is what it looks like. So th with this guy, we're able to shoot ProRes 4K 60 HQ all in this tiny little body. It's got dual IBIS both in the lens and in the body, and it can shoot log, all kinds of crazy stuff in a super handheld, tiny little body. I mean, this thing is so small with a lens that can you can use all day. You can hand hold this thing like this all day and shoot all kinds of stuff. And that's why I love this particular rig setup. And again, the versatility. Say I wanna go and put this camera on my drone. What do I gotta do? 
Unplug the HDMI cable. Unscrew it from the battery grip. And I am ready to go onto my drone. It's that quick. Because I'm using the camera's built-in battery and <laughs> through the battery grip, there's still a battery right here in the camera. I keep a memory card inside of the camera at all times, even when I'm using the Ninja, because then once I pop this guy off, I can put it on my drone and I'm ready to go. There's no fuss, literally unplug one thing and unscrew it from the battery grip. And by far is the fastest way I've seen to get a, a camera on and off of a rig uh, compared to anyone else's rigs that I've seen. So that's why I built this specifically the way that I did, uh, is because I think it's super useful to be able to get this thing on and off the rig really fast. Now, you may not be like me. You may not actually take your camera on and off of the rig a whole lot. In that case, it might be better to go with a more permanent solution and maybe put a V-mount battery on the back or something like that. Um, but in my particular use case, I think this is a super valuable method of doing it and that's why i've done it this way and i'm hoping that you guys might find some value in that too so if you did please let me know by leaving a like and a comment and subscribing to see more videos like this one and i hope you guys got something from this video and i can't wait to see you in the next one peace